It has been 30 years since the body of a young woman was found brutally slain and dumped in a hillside in Ventura. Over the years, the murder of Danelle Kloss went cold, but the determination to catch her killer never wavered. On July 16, 1991, the normally peaceful city of Ventura, California, was shaken by a sudden murder. Daniel Lynn Claus, a 42-year-old woman, was discovered dead in a flood control catch basin in the hills near the downtown area. Despite initial investigative efforts, the case went cold, leaving Daniela's family and the community in a state of unresolved grief. It took 33 long years for the authorities to finally uncover the truth behind her murder. Why did it take more than three decades to find her killer? This is the haunting story of the long-awaited justice for Daniel Lynn. Daniel Lynn Claus was born on July 24, 1948 in Ventura, California, and raised in a loving family. She was the second of three siblings. Her sister Marcy Forte remembers her as a vibrant and caring individual with a heart full of compassion. Daniel attended Ventura High School in her hometown, where she was known for her artistic skills and love for performing arts. She especially enjoyed painting and found comfort in her artwork. After high school, she went to Ventura College and majored in fine arts, hoping to make a career out of her passion. In addition to being a talented artist, Danielle was also a devoted wife and mother. She worked various jobs to support herself and her family. By 1991, she was working as a receptionist at a local law firm. Her co-workers described her as hardworking and always ready to help. Outside of work, Danielle was very involved in community activities and often volunteered at local shelters, motivated by her desire to give back to the community. But little did anyone know that her bright spirit would soon be extinguished. On the night of July 15, 1991, Danielle left her office after a long day of work. She planned to meet a friend for dinner, but never made it to the restaurant. The next morning, her husband grew worried and went around the city looking for her, but there was no trace of Danielle. Unwilling to wait any longer, he reported her disappearance to the Ventura Police Department. The police took immediate action and began the search for Danielle. That very morning, on July 16th, the police made a gruesome discovery. They found Danielle's body in a flood control catch basin in the hilly area near downtown Ventura. The scene was both horrific and perplexing. Around 10.30 a.m. on Tuesday, July 16, 1991, the body of Donnell Claus was found on the hillside located at the top of Tioga Drive near downtown Ventura. Danielle was found partially unclothed with multiple blunt force injuries and was last seen the evening of July 15, 1991 at the corner of Hemlock Street and Thompson Boulevard, talking to a male driving a small white pickup with pinstripe. The condition of her body revealed crucial evidence signs of a struggle and defensive wounds on her hands and arms, indicating she had fought her attacker. An autopsy determined that the cause of death was blunt force trauma to the head, inflicted by a heavy object. The murder weapon was later identified as a rock found at the crime scene. The Ventura Police Department immediately launched a thorough investigation, led by Lieutenant Douglas Aldridge. As the police questioned people, a witness came forward with Danielle's last known sighting, on the evening of July 15, 1991, the witness had seen Danielle talking to a man driving a white pickup truck. Police also found traces of wheel marks at the crime scene, but even after extensive investigation, they were unable to locate the vehicle or its owner. Hoping to find more clues, the police sent Danielle's body to the forensic department. Forensic analysis confirmed that Danielle had been assaulted. DNA evidence was collected from the rock used as a murder weapon but the technology at the time wasn't advanced enough to identify the perpetrator. As a result, the clues remained a puzzle. As the 1990s progressed with no new leads, the case went cold. The investigation stalled, waiting for future technological advancements to bring justice to Daniel Lynn Claus. You know, I miss my sister. Marcy Fort has been waiting three decades for answers about her sister's unsolved murder. I just didn't have a lot of trust that they were doing everything they could because so many years had gone by. As the years passed, many unanswered questions went lingering in the air. Who could have committed such a terrible crime? And perhaps more importantly, with no means to link the DNA evidence, 
was the real culprit hiding in plain sight all these years? Even as these questions haunted the community, Daniel's sister, Marcy Forte, never lost faith in the police department. She believed they would do everything in their power, no matter how long it took, to unmask the real killer and bring justice to Danielle. Marcy's unwavering trust and the tireless efforts of the investigators were key to solving this decades-old mystery. After 33 years of waiting in 2018, a new development breathed life into the investigation. Detective Tyler Buck, who was experienced in solving cold cases, took a fresh look at Danielle Lynn Claus's murder. A few years back, when I was a newer major crimes detective, I developed a pretty significant interest in cold cases, and I was hoping that I'd be able to find something that one of the investigators missed somewhere along the way, something that I could help move the case forward. Detective Buck carefully looked through all the old evidence, such as the rock used to murder Danielle, as well as her fingernail clippings, both of which had the DNA of the culprit. It was over a thousand pages long and it was scanned into one long PDF document. I studied the case, I got really familiar with it, and I could see that retired detective Doug Aldridge and his team at the time did a great job documenting the scene, gathering evidence. We still had a ton of evidence preserved and we had a great DNA profile of the suspect. Although it had been entered into CODIS and had been searching for a match for over 20 years, it simply never hit on any profile in the system. This is very similar to the Golden State Killer case. I connected with our crime scene investigations team and we combed through the evidence to discover that the murder weapon, which was a rock, as well as the victim's fingernail clippings were still available and had never been tested. He checked every part of the case file closely. His commitment to getting justice for Danielle brought back hope for her family and the community. Investigators just had to figure out the identity of the killer with the DNA profile, a task that was now possible with new technology, but also very expensive. In June 2022, they secured a grant to get the necessary funds for an advanced genealogy test with the help of the nonprofit Season of Justice, which provides financial assistance to help solve cold cases. In May of 2021, our CSI team met with Major Crimes and Ventura County Crime Lab forensic scientist Kristen Kanko to present the untested evidence and request four tests so that the DNA on the rock and the fingernail clippings to be compared to the DNA from the sexual assault kit. This test would either confirm or deny that our murder suspect and the suspect were one of the same. So by September 2021, all the DNA came back as a match to one unknown suspect. At that point, we knew we had to use modern investigation methods like familial genealogy to solve this case. However, genealogy testing is quite expensive and we needed additional funding to continue down this path. At this point, we connected with Season of Justice, a nonprofit dedicated to providing funding for law enforcement. They provide agencies and families to help solve cold cases and bring resolution to those impacted by unsolved violent crimes. Detective Tyler Buck used a special technique called forensic genetic genealogy with the help of genealogist Gabrielle Wimmer. This method looks at DNA to find family connections in genealogy databases. When they analyzed the DNA found at the crime scene, they discovered it matched the Welch family who were still alive. The police then contacted Deborah Welch, who they believed was related to the suspect. Deborah willingly provided her DNA sample to help identify her family members. Using this DNA information, the police identified two of Deborah's cousin brothers as potential suspects. Eventually, they found that the DNA from one of these cousins perfectly matched the DNA found at the crime scene. This cousin was a man named Larry Devon Welch, who had passed away in 1999. The detectives suspected that Larry might be the person who had killed Danielle. Our genealogist built out part of the family tree of our suspect. Through meticulous genealogical analysis, a living family member link had emerged. The family member, who we'll call Deborah, was very interested in familial genealogy and had developed a very detailed family tree herself. At that point, our major crimes detectives, Stephanie Avila and Roger Nunez, went down to San Diego to connect with her. 
Once meeting her in person, she was very interested in supporting our investigation. She even provided a whole breakdown of her entire family tree, and she even offered a DNA sample. Through her DNA sample analysis, we learned that she was a first cousin match. Now, this is a huge breakthrough for us. In revisiting her family tree, we knew she only had two male first cousins, and our search was narrowed even further. We are now focusing on a set of brothers, the Welches. One of the brothers was alive and living in the state of Virginia. The other brother was deceased. At this point, we're kind of at a standstill on how to proceed as, you know, we didn't have the staffing or the resources available to send two of our detectives out of state to sit and obtain a surreptitious DNA sample. In October 2023, members of our cold case sexual assault unit comprised of District Attorney Investigator Yumi Kirk, Supervising District Attorney Investigator Paul Walsh, and Senior Deputy District Attorney Brent Nybacker, assisted Ventura PD in further developing a profile on both brothers. Our team was able to uncover distinct characteristics of each brother that would further narrow the identity of our suspect. We learned that Larry Welch, the deceased brother, had brown hair and hazel eyes, while the living brother had blonde hair and blue eyes. This analysis revealed with a high degree of confidence that the suspect had brown or green eyes and brown hair, consistent with the appearance of Larry Welch. However, we needed DNA from the living brother to rule him out and confirm Larry Welch as the murderer. We contacted the Virginia State Police to see if they could assist us as the living brother lived in that state. Special Agent Jonathan Johnson was tasked with assisting us in contacting the living brother. Investigator Kirk flew to Virginia where she and Special Agent Johnson met with the living brother, who was very helpful. He provided important details about Larry's life and also voluntarily provided a sample of his own DNA for analysis. Ultimately, the living brother's DNA sample was tested by the Virginia State Police, and they were able to confirm that the living brother was not the suspect. Further, they established that the living brother was a full sibling of the suspect. This result confirmed that the suspect DNA found at the crime scene belonged to Larry Welch. To be sure, they looked into Larry's life and history. They found out he had been in Ventura around the same time of the murder and had a violent past. They also found evidence that the white pickup truck belonged to him, linking him to the crime scene. Putting all this together, they concluded that Larry Devon Welch was most likely Daniel's killer. After Larry Devon Welch was identified as the perpetrator, the legal proceedings took an unusual path. Since Welch was already deceased, there would be no trial or sentencing. The case was officially closed, and the findings were documented to provide a comprehensive account of the investigation and its resolution. The Ventura Police Department held a press conference to announce the breakthrough detailing the steps taken to solve the case and acknowledging the tireless efforts of the investigators and forensic experts involved. At the press conference, the Ventura Police Chief Officer commended the dedication of the officers and forensic team. He stated that the case showed how their department had never given up on seeking justice for Danielle Lynn Claus. Thanks to advancements in forensic technology, they were able to bring closure to her family and hold her murderer accountable even after Larry's death. The police also acknowledged the role of forensic genetic genealogy in solving the case highlighting its potential in solving other cold cases. I always prayed that I, not so much there be justice, but that, I, that I'd be able to know who did this. 31 years later, my prayers were answered. They did a phenomenal job, and I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful that I live to see at least a meter of justice and that that they found out who did this even though 
even though he he died eight years after she was killed. I want to say that my sister was so much more than a, a victim of a brutal murder. She was more than an artist and, and a, a daughter, a sister, a mother, a wife. She was more than all of those things. She was, she was a, a good person with a, with a mighty soul. And she was taken way, way too young. With Larry Devon Welch identified as the culprit, the case of Daniel Lynn Claus finds some closure, though it's shadowed by the sadness of lost time and unanswered questions. Even though Welch can't be brought to trial, solving the case shows how important it is to keep seeking justice no matter what. For Daniel's sister, Marcy Forte, the resolution brings a mix of feelings. She's relieved to finally have answers, but she's also sad about all the years of pain and uncertainty. Still, Marcy's determination to honor her sister's memory gives hope to others in tough situations. With the case's resolution, there is a renewed sense of purpose within the Ventura Police Department and the broader law enforcement community. The successful use of forensic genetic genealogy in solving Daniel's murder offers hope for solving other cold cases and delivering justice long overdue. Daniel Lynn Claus's story is coming to an end. The outcome of this case is not just about making things right for her family and the community, but also about showing how important it is to keep fighting for justice, even when it seems impossible. Back in 1991, Daniel's murder shocked everyone in Ventura. But even after the years passed, her sister Marcy Forte never gave up hope. She kept pushing for answers, even when it seemed like the case would never be solved. Her determination inspired others to keep searching for the truth. Now, after all this time, there's finally closure. It's a sad ending, but also a relief to know that justice has been served. Daniel's memory will always be with those who loved her, and her story reminds us to never stop fighting for what's right, no matter how long it takes.